Okay, class, can anyone tell me why we can't keep a defense against the dark arts teacher for more than a year? I mean, we even gave that cranky potions guy a shot and even he messed it up. The roster of teachers at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry is an eclectic one, to say the least. They range from werewolves to fortune tellers to double, no, triple agents. You know, now that I think about it, Dumbledore's hiring standards are kind of broad, aren't they? But among all these colorful characters, which one is the best teacher? In this video, we'll be ranking the Hogwarts professors in ascending order from worst to best based on their teaching ability as well as overall character likability. So take out your textbooks, turn to page 394, and let's dive right into today's lesson. While Lord Voldemort was traditionally seen as the main antagonist of the Harry Potter franchise, perhaps the true villain to Hogwarts itself was none other than Dolores Umbridge, unquestionably the absolute worst professor in the entire run of the series and maybe the history of Hogwarts, Dolores Umbridge was universally hated among students and fans. She is a textbook example of a totalitarian dictator, constantly stopping any fun that students have outside of class, and not to mention her cruel and sadistic forms of punishment. Perhaps what makes it worse is that it's masked underneath her unfittingly pink-dressed, bubbly, and charming demeanor. Although, I will give her one thing. She managed a feat which no one before her was able to do, which was to bring all of Hogwarts together in their shared hatred for her. Gilderoy Lockhart was all the buzz when he came rolling into Hogwarts in Harry's second year as the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, and rightfully so. I mean, he is a celebrity. However, beyond all the glitz and glamour, Lockhart was revealed to be a total fraud, and nearly right out of the gate. He lost control of his class involving Cornish Pixies, embarrassingly lost to Snape in a duel, and even blasted himself with the Obliviate charm, but to be fair, it was with Ron's wand. He may have written the best-selling hit Magical Me, but this guy definitely didn't live up to the hype. <laughs> Maybe one of the biggest failures in Hogwarts over the course of the series is somehow allowing Death Eater Barty Crouch Jr. into its halls while in disguise as Alistair Mad-Eye Moody. Now you'd think that Dumbledore would get the memo to not actually hire Dark Wizards as defense against the Dark Arts teachers. There was some promise at first as we see Moody put Malfoy in his place and establish a bit of a rapport with Harry. However, this was obviously all an act as a way to get close to him. Unfortunately, we never got to see the real Mad-Eye teach at the school. But we can assume that by default, he'd do a better job than his imposter. Harry's first year was definitely memorable, considering his first defense against the Dark Arts teacher ended up being a host for THE Dark Lord Voldemort. Now, it goes without saying that the stuttering Professor Quirrell is among the worst teachers in the history's run. He was considered to be an amateur teacher and wizard, but that's the least of his problems, considering he let a troll into the school, tried to kill Harry during his Quidditch match, and harbored the soon-to-return Dark Lord. Horace Slughorn is low-key one of the more problematic professors on the list. While on the surface, nothing seems outright wrong with him, he did play favorites, only caring to give attention to students that he personally saw promise in. This was shown with his exclusive club that he only let a select number of students in. If, by the definition of teaching, we mean the act of showing someone how to do or learn something, he's actually great. And by great, I mean terrible, but great. He's the one who told a young Tom Riddle, albeit unknowingly, about Horcruxes, which would cause a number of issues down the line, to say the least. Uh, just the name itself makes you cower in fear. I can even feel the smack at the back of my head. Yes, it is none other than everyone's favorite potions master and head of Slytherin House, Severus Snape. He is the textbook definition of the teacher you hate. From his methods of intimidation to his hands-on style of punishment, it's not the ideal situation for any student unless you were a Slytherin. He clearly played favorites to members of Slytherin House and had a specific hatred for Gryffindor. However, he did have a high standard of teaching in his class, as it was very no-nonsense and straight to the point. He also expected students to perform highly, which makes him a good teacher in many ways. Now, we obviously know he ended up being a double, then a triple agent, which in itself would be reason enough to possibly put him higher on the list. But in all honesty, don't lie and say you'd actually want to be in his class. 
I mean, okay, fine. I guess if Pottermore told you that you're in Slytherin House, then fine, maybe. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Now, who could forget about the half-goblin charms professor and head of Ravenclaw House? His style of teaching is considered laid-back and forgiving, which made him respected among students. He was considered very relaxed compared to other professors. Flitwick wasn't known to hand out punishment often. In the books, we get a closer look at his classes. He's been known to let certain things slide that other professors may not. Also, of all the professors, he's the only one who actually aged backwards over time. Now maybe I'll have to join his class to learn whatever charm he uses for that. Everyone's favorite half-giant gameskeeper, Rubius Hagrid, only became a professor in Harry's third year at Hogwarts. But from what we saw, he was the perfect fit to teach care of magical creatures. Hagrid already had a known passion and knowledge on magical creatures throughout the series, always having something new to show Harry. Whether it was his dragon egg, Fluffy the three-headed dog, or Buckbeak. Now, where does he get this stuff anyway? Perhaps Harry's closest friend among the Hogwarts staff, Hagrid has a very good relationship and is very well loved among his students. <laughs> Malfoy. <laughs> oh. There's honestly no reason not to love him. But in terms of his class, if I could go to Hogwarts just to ride Buckbeak, that'd be enough for the price of admission. Hogwarts takes bribes, right? While he had a short-lived run as the Defense Against the Dark Arts professor in Harry's third year, Professor Lupin proved to be an exceptional teacher and one of the very best we've seen. For one, he was very likable and got along with students. We see in his class that he has a good sense of humor, even throwing slight shade towards Snape in class. He had a good relationship with Harry, Ron, and Hermione, as well as most of the students from what we could see. I mean, his first interaction with Harry was literally giving him chocolate. You don't really top that. His teaching style was also very fun and relaxed. As we can see during the Boggart demonstration, he even plays music in the background. And the lesson itself actually encouraged laughter in order to defeat the creature. He is also one of the few professors we see go out of his way to actually teach outside of class. You gotta stay strapped in those alleyways, you know what I mean? While historically Defense Against the Dark Arts professors were short-lived, his reason for leaving was actually selfless and for the greater good and safety of the students and faculty. Since he happened to be a werewolf, it unfortunately wasn't in everyone's best interest to stay, as it'd be too risky. I mean, he could have kept himself chained in the basement on full moons if he really needed the money. Hagrid could always use another dog. Okay, was there any doubt about this? Professor McGonagall is the epitome of what a Hogwarts professor should be. She was Dumbledore's right hand among the staff, even acting as deputy headmistress in his absence. She clearly has the experience and skill. For one thing, she's an animagus, which is rare as it is, and fitting that she'd teach transfiguration. She's also very powerful, displaying great skill in the final battle as we see that she was able to fend off Snape. But most importantly, she is a fair leader and is very level-headed. We see that while she is the head of Gryffindor House, she didn't play favorites. On multiple occasions, she doesn't hesitate to punish Harry, Ron, and Hermione for their constant antics, but she's also willing to reward good behavior as well. For these reasons, we have no doubt in our mind that she is the absolute best teacher at Hogwarts. The history of teachers within the halls of Hogwarts is a colorful list of characters, isn't it? I guess you'd kind of have to expect that from a school that has baby plants that screech so loud that they literally kill. Shout out to our honorable mention, Professor Sprout. Now, this is a random thought, but speaking of mandrakes, since they're technically plants, would it be considered vegan to eat them, or would that be off limits? I wonder what the vegans of the wizarding world would think about this. I'm sure they have debates about this in the Gryffindor common room. 